Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be going through the Warcry Harbingers of Destruction supplement book. So here we go, here's the Harbingers of Destruction supplement for Warcry, and I picked up all four of these books that all came out in December 2020. So you've got the Harbingers of Destruction, the Sentinels of Order, the Bringers of Death, and the Agents of Chaos. And these are all books for the different war bands that you can play in war by, uh, Warcry, and each one is for one of the different orders. And you can see that size-wise, these aren't the same. So the Radiance of Chaos and the Sentinels of Order, they're a little bit bigger, and they're coming in at 112 pages. And then also, they've also included some details on the cover. So really, you've got 113 pages there. And then the smaller ones, the Destruction and the Bringers of Death, they're coming in at 64 pages and then 65 with that back cover. And then price-wise on these, the Harbingers of Destruction and the Bringers of Death, they come in RRP at £15. And the Sentinels of Order and the Agents of Chaos, the RRP is 20 I'll put links to all of these books in the description below and there'll be links to Element Games where you can save up to 20% on the RRP there. There'll be affiliate links but it won't cost you anything extra, in fact it's going to save you money and with every sale made through an affiliate link I get a small commission and that's going to help me buy more cool stuff like this, do more videos, so thanks so much for that support, I really appreciate it. So I've done videos for each one of these books now but in this video we'll focus on the Harbingers of Destruction and we'll go through it right from the start right to the end and you'll see exactly what's included in the book and then see if it's something you'd like to pick up for your Warcry game. So let's get rid of these other three books and we'll get started on the Harbingers of Destruction. So here we go, here's the front cover and it says here Harbingers of Destruction, Savage Warriors of Gorka Morka, and we've got some great artwork on the front. And I'm loving the Warcry branding. They've done such a great job with all the packaging, and these books are no different. They're really great. Uh, but I particularly like the Harbingers of Destruction. This is a really great image that we see on the front there. And then on the back, we get a photograph so we can see them in action, and we're getting a look at some of the Oryx there. And this guy from the Gloom Spite, Gits. So it's giving us an idea of what we're going to get. And then this looks like the War Gog Prophet, which is a great miniature that I've only just picked up and I can't wait to get this built. And so this tells us a little bit of information on the back about what we're going to get. And so this book is going to include all the war bands from the Order of Destruction. And it's an essential guide for anyone seeking to command the anarchic but deadly forces of destruction in Warcry. Detailed within the full rules for four war bands, the Brutal Iron Jaws, the Crazed Bone Splitters, Ravenous Ogre Moor Tribe, and the Cunning Gloom Spike Gits, each with their own fascinating background and unique playstyle. Also included in the book is a wide array of new content for narrative play, specifically tailored for the Destruction Factions. You can personalise your warbands with detailed name and background generation tables, then embark on brand new Fated Quests and Challenge Battles to prove your might. Gorka Morka hungers for war and the tribes are growing restive. So get your lads together and seek out the greatest fights around. And then it says here that this book contains additional rules for Warcry, including fighter cards, ability tables for the four warbands, belonging to the Grand Alliance of Destruction. And you'll also find new content for narrative play, included those fated quests and six new challenge battles for the Destruction warbands. So this is gonna be packed with some great information. And if you've got uh, destruction warband you want to play then this really is a good buy I think to get but don't take my word for it let's get it open and we'll take a look through and see what's inside so opening it up we can see here with the contents that we're going to just get a little bit about how to use the, the book go through the warbands and then it breaks down them individually so we're going to see the gloom spike gits the ogre moor tribe the auric war clans which includes the bone splitters and iron jaws then we've got our background tables, some campaigns and challenges, the fated quests and challenge battles, and then finally the warband rosters. And so each of these books all starts off with a great bit of narrative, one page that you can read through, and I'm not gonna do that. Obviously you wanna read this yourself, um, but it just gives you an idea of why these warbands are in the eight points. You know, what are these 
um, bone splitters do in here. So this gives you a little bit of idea why they would be there. So that's really good and not too much to read, but just enough to give a flavour of what it's all about. And then here we're going to get a couple more pages, again just with a bit more background, a little introduction into the hordes of the destruction and why they would be here. And then how to use the book. This is very similar for all these books, but they just tailor it specifically for each of the alliances. So here it's just going to tell us what rules are inclu included, who can use them, how you can use heroes and allies, monsters and thralls, look at the war bands, campaigns and challenge battles. And the heroes and allies is great because now with this update you can include other fighters who've got the leader room mark in your warband and they can be included as a hero so that's really cool. But if they've got that leader room mark uh, they can't act as a leader so you can still only have one leader in your warband who uses the leader abilities but having this option now allows you to bring in other miniatures that you'd otherwise use as a leader and now you can use them as a hero so this is great so we can have heroes and allies now and um, that's really awesome for expanding your warband certainly once you go into the campaign and narrative play you're going to want more miniatures and you're going to want more heroes for sure it's just going to make it much more fun so this is a really good update that they brought in now and that uh, adds a lot to the gameplay i think and the next section is really great. This is all about monsters and thralls. So now you can include monsters and thralls in your warband, which is awesome. And uh, it just says here that if you did pick up the monsters and mercenaries expansion, then the rules here will supersede the rules in that book. So that's just to pay note on that if you want to stick to the rules. Of course, you don't have to use these updates if you don't want to, if you're just playing at home. But if you want to keep up to date, then this is where you're going to find the up to date rules. So there's a few changes here, regards to activating, moving, and Monster Hunter abilities, and then the universal abilities as well. I mean, I haven't played with monsters yet. It's something I can't wait to do. Um, but it's just to be aware, if you have played, then these are gonna be the updated rules for those monsters. And then it's got another page with the monster hunting abilities. So if you go and you wanna pitch your warband against a specific monster, then you get some extra abilities you can use, which is gonna be really fun and the monster also gets some abilities so they're all on the page as well and then it just shows you here how you can use monsters in your battles and it can use it in the following ways you can include them in your warband open play narrative play or match play but man wouldn't it be cool to have a, a monster in your warband that's going to be great fun and then over here uh, the cards you need the specific abilities to the monster and the damage table and this is going to be how to damage points allocated, how much they can move, and then the damage output. And so this gives you all the information there and the cards and everything. So you don't need to pick up any cards. So if you've already got some of these models, you can use them in Warcry and just get the information from here, which is one of the best things about these books. It's really opened up the whole Age of Sigmar range to bring into Warcry now, which I think is brilliant. And then turning the page, again we've got more monsters that you can use and then some destruction thralls. So that's really great. So you're getting lots of options here to bring those bigger models in and that's really fun. And as well as monsters you can have thralls in your warband and if we flick back to this bit it just gives you the information here about using thralls. So that's really good. So again you can fight them or you can have them in your warband. So it's giving you loads of options which is great. Okay, let's move on to the next section. And now we're gonna start going in to the individual war bands. And this, in this section, you'll find all the rules you need to muster the war bands and use them in your battles. And this is gonna have everything from background information, uh, introduction, why they're in the eight points in the first place. And so we get a nice bit of photography and artwork here introducing us. And then for each war band, you're gonna find a couple of pages with some great narrative and this is going to give you a little background as to what they're doing here. So if you've been playing Gloom Spike Gits in Age of Sigmar, then you can make up your own background and your own stories and everything, your own lore. But I think this is nice as an introduction to get you into it. And then over here you can see for the Gloom Spike Gits, you get all your abilities, you get your leader abilities, and then you get all the cards for the different fighters you can use. And if you've picked up 
the Warcry cards for the Gloom Spike Gits, or if you were lucky enough to get the box set, which I completely missed out on for the Gloom Spike Gits for Warcry, then you'll already have some cards. Um, but the chances are you won't have all the cards that they're now featuring in these books, and there's a chance that some of the statistics are going to be updated in here. So you can see we've got nine there for the Gloom Spike Gits. But if we turn the page, we've got another ten fighters that we can use. And we could use five of the Goba Paloozas. And so you're getting tons there all together. So what's that? 10, 15, 20. We can get 24 different fighters now that you can use in your warband. And that doesn't even include monsters and thralls. So this is really opening it up, which I think is, is brilliant and a great move. And you don't have to buy the cards. So you could buy this book for, what, RRP 15? Get it at Element Games for around £12. And then you've got everything you need to play not just the Gloom Spike Gits, but the other three warbands in, in the Alliance of Destruction as well. So, I mean, that's great. That's what I really love about it. And you get all the up-to-date abilities and fighter abilities. So, what this allows you to do is then construct a warband with maybe you've already got the miniatures, so you can put together a warband of what you've got. Or you can build it in advance and then go looking for the miniatures. And that's what I've done for the Gloom Spike Gits. I had a look through and then I thought, how can I use the Underworld set? that you get, and maybe some squig herds. So that would be like, all I'd have to do is buy two sets, quite low priced, and I'd get tons of miniatures, and I can use the cards beforehand to work out exactly who I'm gonna use for what, and how many points I'd get from it. So that's a great way to use the book. And another way is you can read up on your enemy. So anyone you're going up against, you can get a good idea of their abilities, which will indicate what tactics they're going to use, and then you can kind of work your gameplay around that as well and include it in your tactics and your planning. And although in Warcry you really want to be playing the objectives and playing the, the game rather than the opponent, I think doing a bit of both is not going to do you any harm. So learning the, your enemy's tactics is a really good move, and I think this book is perfect for that. But you can see here, this is so good. You're getting so much information so specific to the Gloom Spike Gits, and then for the Goba Palooza, you get even more abilities. So that's really good. And if you've got these sets already, bring them straight into the game. Okay, so that's our Gloom Spike Gits, and now let's take a look at the Ogre Moor tribes. And again, you get a nice introduction, just telling you all about them and why they're there. And that's just enough to get a good flavour of the Warband and what they're about. And then again, you get your fighter abilities, your leader abilities, and then you get all the fighter types. And so you can see here, you've got eight, 16, 19, all together. So tons of fighter type cards, which is really good. And this opens up many of the figures that you find with Age of Sigmar. So I use this book to plan uh, Ogre Moor tribes, but I also bought the cards that go with it. And the cards were lined up perfectly for a set of ogre gluttons. So I thought, you know, I really like having the cards, even though you don't need them with the book. It's nice to have them if you can find them, and it's nice to use them on the ta on the table as you play. So you haven't got the book open, and it's nice to put the tokens on the card. So if you're trying to run it on a couple of pages, obviously that's not going to be, you know, you're not going to be able to do that. But I think with the book, you can photograph them, photocopy it, and then print them off. And that's a good way to go, for sure. And you can make these a bit bigger as well, if you don't want them small like that. So I think that's the way to go if you want to start using the book rather than the cards. Um, because putting the tokens on the battlefield next to the miniatures, just you're going to have too many. Once they start getting some hit points, it's going to just have too many tokens on there with the activations as well. So I find I put the activation tokens on the battlefield, but I put the the kind of damage points and the wounds on the cards. So just bear that in mind. But you don't need the cards, but I think you would be wanting to photocopy and print these off. But with the cards, I didn't get all these fighter types. So there was many on here that weren't included in the card pack. I've done a video on the Ogre Moor Tribes, the unboxing of the Ogre Gluttons, and going through that card pack if you want to check it out. Um, but you definitely get more options here. So if you want to bring a hero in, like I've picked up the Underworld set, and I'll be bringing in a hero, and he also comes with a Frost Saber, so I'll be included a couple of new miniatures in it, and using the cards from this for those miniatures. So, and those Underworlds are great. They're a great way to bring in heroes and allies to your warband, and also it gives you really unique and well-sculpted miniatures to bring in too. 
So that's our Ogre Moor tribes. Nice bit of photography there, they're going up against the Untamed Beasts. Now we're moving on to the Oruk War Clans, and this is going to be the Iron Jaws and the Blo Bone Splitters. So they're getting a bit of background and narrative about them and why they're there. And then straight in with the Bone Splitters, we've got our Fighter Abilities, our Leader Abilities, and then we've got nine Fighter Types there. And then we turn the page, we've got another ten. And then that moves us on to the Iron Jaws. So that gives us, like, what, 19 Fighter Types for the Bone Splitters. And again, I've used this to pick up a pack of Savage Oryx. And I also got the Word Gog Prophet, which I love the look of. And this is the first, I think it's the first, yeah, it would be the first um, blister pack I bought because it was like £15 for a miniature. So it seemed quite a lot to pay £15 for one miniature when the whole set of Savage Oryx are only like £20, £25. Um, but it looked so good, so I had to pick it up. And as a leader, that's going to be a great miniature and it's going to really go well with the Savage Oryx. Um, you've got lots of options. And with that Savage Oryx pack, you can put together loads of different fighters from these fighter type cards. And then with a little bit of modification, you can even create some of the bosses, I think, if you wanted to from it. So again, if you're playing like serious match play and you want the exact miniature to match the exact card, then that's not going to work. But for me, the Wurgog Prophet and a box of Savage Oryx was perfect. And I'll be doing a video of that really soon. So the chances are, if you're watching this, that video will also be up. So check that out if you like the Bone Splitters. But they look like a real fun warband to play. And again, I'm getting all my information for them from the book. And I've got no cards. So everything I need to know is going to be in here. And there's a nice picture of that Prophet. He looks awesome. Really cool. Okay, now moving on to the Iron Jaws, and again we've got the Fighter Abilities and the Leader Abilities, and then we're going to get eight Fighters there, and another eight here, and that's all the Fighters for the Iron Jaws. And I picked up the Iron Jaws as the actual Warcry Warband, and so we got the cards and the miniatures that came in that set, but again you're going to get some more options here. And you don't need to pick up that set. So if you're playing Iron Jaws, and even if you've got Iron Jaws from Underworlds or Age of Sigmar, the main game, then you can bring them straight in and again use the book for that. So it's really good. But I'll be using the Iron Jaws pack and also the Underworld set to have some extra ones. And then maybe I'll pick up a weird knob, Shaman, in the future. I don't know yet. So I have to wait and see on that. But um, again, it's got everything you need for the Iron Jaws in the book and a picture of them going up against my favourite, the Corvus Cabal there. So it's really great. And now that brings us to the end of that section. And so now we'll move on to the background tables. So the background tables are really fun and a great part of the whole Warcry narrative play. And this section is going to give you a series of naming tables for the destruction warbands and also background generators so you can add some personality to your leader and your war brand as a whole. And I think it's important to note you don't have to use the background tables. You can come up with your own background, your own names and things like that. But if you wanted to do it kind of quickly or you're new to it and you kind of just want to get an idea of some of the names and backgrounds that would be associated with them and then kind of spin off that into your own creations, then this is perfect for that. And I think for me, I'm trying to collect all the war bands. So there's no way I'm going to know about them, like the Corvus Cabal I really like, and so I can delve into that, use my imagination and create stuff ready for when I go on the campaigns. But for most of the others, the chances are I'm only going to use those as enemies against uh, the ones I play in the campaigns and in the battle reports going forward. So I don't want to spend too much time on the background of those, so this is where I'm really going to use those background tables and also the naming tables too. Okay, so here we go, so let's take a look at this. And I don't know who that is in this picture, but that looks kind of cool. If you know what that model is, let us know in the comments below. It'd be great to know. And that one, that may be a Gooba Paluta, but I don't know what that one is. But it looks great. I love the artwork they put in. And here we go, so we get our naming tables. So let's use, um, let's go for an example with the bone splitters. So the idea is you pick a first name and a last name, and you can just roll a D10 to do it randomly or you can just pick it pick whichever one you like and match it up with another one you could have a family so you have a couple with the same last names or whatever pretty much anything you like so you can use a dice to do it randomly or 
choose yourself or come up with completely new ideas that you've thought of. And then this section down here is the origin table. And this is going to tell you where, you, well, obviously where your warband originated from, um, but it gives you some good idea. So here, Howling Mad, your warband consists of the tribe's most crazed battle, uh, battle crazed lunatics. So that's really fun. And um, or they could be glory hunters. Your warriors seek to prove themselves by committing the most reckless acts of violence. And I think a good thing to do is once you've got an origin or a background for your leader or favoured warrior is to use that when you're playing the game. So think instead of thinking what you would do, think about what your uh, crazed Oruk would do. How would they react in a situation? And then that's really fun. Like if they're howling mad, they're likely to do mental things in the battle. Or if they're glory hunters, they're going to want the, the glories. So they want to do the big kills or they want to get the treasure. So just kind of acting out how they would act in the game. I think that's really fun. And then this table is the leaded or favoured warrior background. So you can give a background to the specific two fighters then. So you could pick a favoured warrior, like your champion, uh, or any, any of them, and then your leader, and then choose one of these. And again, this is just gonna give you ideas. So you can come up with your own favoured backgrounds. But here, old rival is one example. This warrior keeps the mouldering head of a hated rival, which they often argue with. I mean, that's really funny. And if you put that with the, um, Wurgog Prophet, that's going to be awesome. And also make the head one of the other war bands that they come up against, and then they can be uh, like rivals whenever they meet. It just adds to the fun of it all. So I think this is really cool, and this can give you some really good playability in the game. So that's an example for the Bone Splitters, but you're going to get the same thing personalised for the Gloom Spike Gits, the Iron Jaws, and the Ogre Maw Tribes. So lots of information there, and fun to create your war bands with it. So this next section is campaigns and challenges and in this section you're going to find four new fated quests that you can play with all the destruction warbands and then this is going to be something i haven't started doing yet but i can't wait uh, this is the fated quests and this is something to just add to your gameplay and expand on everything you're doing and it gives you all the information here about what the fated quests are what your honor and glory is and how you that's your like reward for fighting them and then it gives you all the details for those fated quests, usually on two pages like this. So you'll get a brief introduction. Again, it's all nice and brief, the narrative, but enough to get you going. You get a cool little map just to give you an idea of where you are. And then you get your artifact of power and your command traits. And then you get what's called a convergence. So you get your first, second and final. And then there's a campaign outcome. So everything you need for this specific fated quest is included in just two pages. And this is a really great template if you ever wanted to expand and write your own fated uh, quest. So you could just use this template and almost fill in with your own information. And that's something that I'm definitely going to be doing. And that's coming real soon. So I started doing the battle reports. The next step is to move into campaigns and fated quests. And then it'll be to create my own and then share them with you, obviously. So yeah, that, that'll be great. And so here you can see we've got one, two, three, four fated quests and any of the war bands from Destruction can play those. And then it's got our Honour and Glory, and these are what's called your Spoils of Victory. So you get to choose those at the end. And now our next section are the Challenge Battles. And the Challenge Battle is a battle that are unique battles, and they're available to any warband who's on a campaign quest. And in this section, it gives you six Challenge Battles for the Destruction warbands to attempt. So this is really cool. And again, it's got all the information about the battle plan, the spoils, the aftermath, playing again, the narrative of challenge battles. So this is all included here. It tells you how to set up and who your adversaries are. So all the information you need. And now these ones are even more straightforward because they're just on one page. So this is nice and easy now. This is one page and you just have your introduction, your setup, any special rules, the battle plan. So this one looks like it's in the catacombs and then you get your spoils. So nice and simple, a good way to get straight in there. And you're gonna get one, two, three, four, five, you're gonna get six of those. And then that brings us right to the end where we've got our Warcry Warband roster. And on this, you keep track of your Warband name, your origin, campaign quest, what territories you dominate, the campaign progress tracker. So this is those convergences from the previous pages. So you, you map them out on here. 
And then you've got what monsters are included, are here as and allies, your leader, favoured warrior, and then all your fighters. And then so you keep track of them on this. And again, you'll be wanting to photocopy this or take a photograph and use your iPad or something like that or a tablet. So that's got everything there. And then that brings us to the end of the book. And that's everything that's included in the Harbingers of Destruction supplement book. So all up, I, I really like these books. And, and I've picked them all up because I've got all the different warbands. But if you're looking to just do maybe one or two warbands from one of the alliances, then really you only need one book. You don't need all four. But if you want to look at the other warbands and see what the enemy fighters are up to and learn their abilities and tactics, then it's worth getting the others. And again, it all ties in to the narrative of Warcry and the eight points and the setting and everything. So it's good fun to have them. But uh, I've found once you get them, you end up wanting all the all the war bands, don't you? <laughs> so you end up buying more miniatures. Um, it's not a bad thing, but just be aware of that. If you get it, you're probably going to want to buy more things. Like I never planned to get um, the bone splitters, but then the, as I was reading through this, they just looked so much fun and they looked awesome. And then I got hooked on this Wurgog Prophet, and then that was it. I had to get them. And it just all sounds great. Um, and even the Iron Jaws, when I got those as the Warcry box set, I didn't think they were going to be as good as they are. But it just all sounds really fun to play with, and they look great. So I think the, book, the book's good to introduce you to things perhaps you wouldn't go to straight away, or you wouldn't choose naturally or normally. So I think that's a good option for these. But just for the information in there, it's huge. So if you want to play two warbands out here, this book's going to have so much value for you. And if you can get it at Element Games for that discount, then that's even better. It'd be great to hear what you think about the Harbingers of Destruction or any of the supplement books that have come out and which ones have you got, how much use have you got out of them, is there any you wish you didn't get maybe? Um, but yeah, share your thoughts in the comments below, it'd be awesome to hear from you. And I hope this video was helpful and I hope it give you a good look at the book, what you're going to get and you can decide if it's something you want to add to your Warcry collection. Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.